I think with coaching, it's so much more about that connection with someone and taking them through an environment in which they're not comfortable a lot of the time, which is why they've hired you. And they've hired you so that they can feel more comfortable and feel like they can step into a gym and be able to work out and train themselves and have the knowledge and the awareness to be able to take themselves through a workout. It's much different than just hopping onto a machine or some type of treadmill or bike. There's a lot more to it. And so being a coach, there's an emotional tie between you and clients. And some clients are different than others, or sometimes you're closer than others. But as a coach, you're taking people through very frustrating and challenging moments. And it takes a very deep, deep, deep connection with someone to be able to train them and coach them properly. Time to hit the gym. Better do it smart. Get your own coach. There where you are. Start the day right. There in your home. With the smartest gym in the world. Ready, set, go. Smart handle. Smart bar. Smart training. There you are. Welcome to the Superset Episode 5. This is Crystal O'Keefe. And this is Tom O'Keefe. So uh, we started a cool thing this week. We did? We did start a cool thing. Did you forget already? No, I didn't forget. Oh, I couldn't tell if you were saying No, I was we like, did. we did. There we go. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so we started, uh, um, we started doing these on Zoom and capturing the video. Yes. And now the video lives on the YouTubes. It does. So we, uh, we're very popular with uh, 11-year-olds now. <laughs> Isn't that how the YouTubes work? Uh, really, right now, we're not popular with anyone. We have two views. Yeah, you and me. So, that's a little poultry. Yeah, yeah. So uh, maybe we should do the TikTok. <laughs> Are I, you going to dance for it? I heard the kids love the tickety talk. Yeah. So. But uh, but no, so uh, we are capturing the whole thing, even our interviews. Yes. So um, that means this week's interview. Right. Nicolette. Yes. And Coach Extraordinaire. Right. Uh, you you can you can see her in all her iPhone glory. Yes. Uh, if you go to our YouTube channel. You sure can. So that's pretty exciting. It is. Yeah. So uh, besides Coach Nicolette. Yeah. What uh, what do you have in store for people this week? Big announcement coming in from Tonal. Actually, there's a couple of them. So, and there's some big news. We're going to talk about new features, talk about new content, and I think that's it. Awesome. Well, before we get to all that, uh, shameless plugs, don't forget, we're available on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, uh, wherever you're getting your podcasts, you can find us. While you're there, be sure and subscribe. Or if you're on Spotify, follow. They like to be different. It's not subscribe over there. It's follow. That's true. That's so, true. So uh, don't want to create any confusion. Right. But uh, be sure and subscribe and or follow so you never miss an episode. And you can also find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash superset podcast uh, where we will post new things as they break. So you might hear breaking news on, on the podcast, but if you're in the Facebook page or the group, you might find that out a little sooner. That's true. And it's easier to talk to us and other superset listeners within the group. Yeah, it absolutely is. So uh, there, I guess uh, I guess that's all of that. Let's uh, let's dig in, shall we? Sure. Big news. Uh, this is the first time we get to announce this on the Superset. It is. There is a new coach. It's going to be Coach Allison Tibbs. Very exciting. She is the brand new tonal coach and she will be uh, doing strength and I believe meditation workouts as well. Awesome. Yeah. Well, that's great news. Do we uh, have any background on her? Well, we do. I need to bring up the link. Let's see here. I take it you didn't read it. No. <laughs> you sent it. It happened like right as we were. I know. It was the way you were like, here, you do it. <laughs> it um, happened right as we were getting ready to record, right? Like it's. It did. Yeah. It did. And you were you were doing stuff. It doesn't actually give a ton of information about like her history. Uh, what we do know is that 
Her fitness philosophy is to redefine wellness in a way that makes you your happiest, strongest, most whole self. Uh, She is a NASM certified personal trainer with pre and postnatal specializations, among many others. She's well versed in nutrition and a best selling author. How about that? I bet that'll come in. I bet that will come in very handy. I bet a lot of people will really be interested in the pregnancy related stuff. Absolutely. Absolutely. There's a lot. There's a lot to unpack there. Yeah. Well, that sounds like a great addition. Absolutely. Super excited to take classes with her. And I guess while we're talking about uh, new achievements or milestones in the world of Tonal. Yes. It seems like just yesterday we were talking about their uh, Facebook group hitting 4,000 members. It was. It was just a few weeks ago. And then ta-da. Boom. They're at 5,000. Congrats to the Tonal community. They call it the OTC official tonal community but when i hear otc all i can think of is the pharmacy is over the oh, counter over the counter okay i was like trying to make it a brand name pharmacy <laughs> i was like what cvs otc no <laughs> like working in a pharmacy gotcha but that's really exciting congrats to tonal that's awesome absolutely growing by leaps and bounds totally So before we start this segment, we should probably preface the fact that uh, we don't know anything about sports. We are unsportsy people. Right. And so uh, when we talk about things like this, please know that we know that we are not qualified to talk about it. We are just reporting information as it is given to us. Right. And I know even <laughs> less about sports. Actually, I don't know that that's true. You know weird trivia. I about know sports. weird things, but only when it intersects with like pop culture. So we're yeah. talking about. So I don't know much about sports, and we live in a town without an NBA team, and we're about to talk about NBA stuff. That's true. And I only know about basketball teams that were stranded on Gilligan's Island. Yeah, that's, that's the also extent true. of my knowledge of basketball. It. Mine's not much better. I still think you know more. But anyway. So uh, we were passed along an article from The Atlantic this week. We were. And uh, it's all about Clippers player Paul George. And so I guess uh, Paul George was out due to an injury. And then, of course, there was the COVID. So um, heard of it. Yeah. So then, of course, that kind of slowed things down, too. But um In this article in The Atlantic, Paul George talks about how he used the tonal to get back to his fitness levels that he was at. Like he did physical therapy and stuff normally. Right. But then he used the tonal during the quarantine to stay in shape, to get in better shape. So I thought that was really cool. Yeah. Like the the article really wasn't necessarily about tonal, which in a way actually made it cooler because absolutely because uh, the tone of the article as I read it, and it's hard for me to focus on sports for long amounts of time, I kind of glaze over. But uh, but it was like everybody's kind of like this guy got injured and he's a big deal. It says here, according to the Wikipedia, a five time all NBA team selection, as well as a four time member of the NBA all star defensive team. Right. So like he's got the goods and people were kind of surprised that he was getting as healthy as he was and then they just like kind of slip in real cash oh yeah well my tonal yeah this is my i got the tonal so yeah of course i'm good yeah yeah and uh we don't know many details but there was uh some kind of hint as to a partnership that had been in the making with tonal and that we might hear again about in the future so keep your ears perked watch the space listen to the space uh because if, as we learn more about that we will definitely bring it back here absolutely there was a uh a, a tonal talk yet another tonal talk yeah, uh, yeah on july 9th yep all about rebuilding strength after cancer yeah and uh it was with community member jerome snell and uh it was all about you know different things that he struggled with to get his strength back but tonal ultimately helped him with that i'm purposely kind of keeping it you know low key as far as my explanation goes for two reasons sure one i want you guys to go out and watch it on facebook.com where you can see it in the tonal official tonal community right right. but two we're going to be interviewing jerome ah and so i i want to i don't want to give away too much right you know want people to have the element of surprise you're like cliff's notes yeah 
keep it a high level. Right. And just leave an, an, enough details out to where if we give them a quiz, they will fail. Yes. But let me just say that Jerome used the words life changing about the tonal. Awesome. Yeah. And uh, speaking of tonal talks, there's another one coming up, which will probably have already dropped by the time this airs. It will. But uh, that is going to give you an inside look at the technology behind your tonal. Yeah. So they're going to be talking to the uh, tonal tonals VP of software, David Azaria. It's all about some of the details about your favorite features on the tonal, like the digital weights, the progress tracking, advanced weight modes. And uh, and then at the end, there's going to be a live Q&A session. So uh, again, like you said, it will have already aired whenever we we air this episode, but it was July 15th at 5 p.m. Pacific time. I'm looking forward to that because, you know, I love all the (laughs) I love all the tech. And this will stop you from like getting a screwdriver and taking the thing apart and seeing what's inside of it. Oh, I would never do that. Oh, good. Yeah. Now my (laughs) ex-husband would do that. (laughs) Part of why he's your ex-husband. That's right. (laughs) Coach Pablo, who we know because of his deep and abiding affection for (laughs) cheetahs. Someday he's going to hear something about this and be like, what? What are they talking about? (laughs) I don't don't know any cheetahs. Trust us. You do. You do. You know, you know a lot about them. Uh, He's going to go live in the OTC. Yes. Uh, You can ask Coach Pablo anything. So uh, again, this will have aired whatever this episode airs, but it was July 16th at 4 p.m. Pacific time. So I just want to. You know, reiterate as long as it's nothing weird. Yeah, don't make it weird. But I guess you, you can't make it weird because it will already occur. That's true. But uh, but don't even think of the weird things. How yeah, about that? Like, just don't go even down that allow road. it in your brain. Right. This is a good way to practice in a safe environment. That's right. New tonal content. There are tons of new workouts getting thrown at people. There are. Uh, there's some really unique ones that I want to bring to everybody's attention. Uh, one is intentional breathing that Coach Jared dropped. It's uh, all about uh, a technique that you can use that provides centering and empowerment after a workout. Uh, it helps you get your mind and body to a calm, improved state. Uh, then there is another workout by Coach Jared called Cool Down and Restore. So it's a, a good breathing breathing and stretching technique examples it's going to help reward your muscles and keep them operating like new then i'm looking forward to this one as well advanced metabolic arms with coach liz so what she does is she takes all the physiology hacks by using um, the advanced techniques so there's a lot of time under tension so you will exhaust your muscle fibers and stimulate an increased growth response so it sounds insanely hard. <laughs> it does. <laughs> now she, am I getting my coaches mixed up? She's the one with the PhD. She right? is the one so, with the PhD. That's right. Like That's this right. is the, you got a doctor doing this. For yeah, you. yeah. Really deep dive into why the why this works. Yeah. So that will be a great workout to take. Another one I want to bring to everybody's attention is the quick core burner with Coach Nicolette, who is our interview this week. Yes, I want to bring this to your attention though because people, this is her personal ab workout. She talks about it in the interview briefly, but um, the reason I want to mention it is because people ask for this workout when they heard about it. Yeah, and so she went ahead and and published oh, it. Cool. So it's very cool. It's nice to see them responsive like that. Absolutely. Uh, And then uh, for all you golfers out there, there is Above Par with Coach Paul. And it's all about getting your golf game to be better by strengthening the movements you need on the links. Well, I bet that will be very popular. Absolutely. They should have something like that for Golden Tee. (laughs) A little different muscle movement. Sure. A little bit. But you still need... The you, skill. You want to know uh, something whenever, before I met you. Okay. I there, was, wait, uh, there was a time before I know, you met me? I know, it's hard to believe. It is. But I, I was actually on a date with a guy that I knew wasn't going to work because he got mad at me because right. I sucked at golden tea. I, I was like, this this cannot continue. Well, it makes you feel I'm better. out. I was just making a golf reference. I've never played. Oh, I knew you had never played. Golden tea. But my point is that I stink at it. And that was <laughs> that was the subject of a date once. Wow. Yeah. I'm, well, I luckily for me, you suck at golden tea. 
What a different world we would live in. It's true. If you were on some Goldenstein. This podcast would not exist yes. if I was good at golden tea. <laughs> <laughs> I was worried where that was going at first because it's like. <laughs> You're like, I was at a weird date, and then you're like, we're halfway through, a golden what? Oh, tea. Okay. <laughs> no. I feel a lot better about that. <laughs> That's all we're going to say about that. New tonal features. We talked about uh, a little a little while back, like we've been doing it for a hundred years. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Oh, way back in the... I think the it was two- episode three? In the two. <laughs> uh, but uh, we talked about the people wanting to do one-off workout workouts but then they got to leave a program right and what do you do my suggestion was buy a second tonal it was and it was tonal i guess stepped in yeah they, they took, it, surprisingly they didn't think that was the best solution i think they thought it was the best solution i just think they didn't think it was a realistic solution mm, right okay. so okay. cooler heads prevailed mm. and they now have a way to do that that's true uh so just just to recap i know you don't work out on the tonal so i have to i have to clarify for you the, the issue was that you could not work you could not belong to two programs at once okay that was the actual issue so now you can be enrolled in a program and you want to do a workout from a different program you can do that workout without leaving your program it's like being a workout double agent yeah exactly exactly and of course your stats will still increase because like if now uh, the way it worked before is that if you were in a program and then you went to go join another program everything you had done in the first program was now gone they were like you're a big quitter (laughs) you're out of here yeah so now you can stay in that program go do a one-off all of your stats count everybody's happy Everybody is happy. There you go. Checking in with the Tonal team. So uh, joining us today via the magic of Zoomaphone, <laughs> as we now say, uh, it's Tonal coach extraordinaire, Nicolette Amarius. How's Hi. it going? Hi. I'm How you guys doing? Good. How good. are you? I'm really excited to be here. I can't believe I'm on a Tonal podcast. <laughs> it seems a little... Uh, unreal uh, that this exists. I think we're still like all the coaches are still like there are group Facebook groups out there that <laughs> talk about us. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> so, so now there's a podcast, which is just seems so wild. <laughs> well, not only are you on, you are the the first instructor That's that true. we've had on here. You are the Neil yeah. Armstrong of the superset. <laughs> I am. I know. I was like going over all the episodes. I was like, I'm the first uh, coach on here. I know that Kate was on there, community manager, and she's like just leads the way. You know, she's <laughs> incredible. So I'm, and then Julius Jones yes. as well, which is exciting. Cool. So I'm so happy to be here and really, really happy to be the first coach. Well, thank you for taking the time to do this. We really appreciate it. Thank you for asking me. So I am super curious how life led you to Tonal. How did that happen? So I uh, started uh, when I was in college, actually, I, you know, went to I came to SF State and I was like, I want to get super fit. My dad is actually really fit and in the gym and we we look alike and he has lots of tattoos. So we definitely are like one in the same. Um, he's like my other half. But he, he worked out a lot as I was younger, but I always played sports and danced and sang. So I went to college. I was like, I got to work out. So I got a job at 24 Fitness, just like working at the front desk. And I then became like a manager very quick because they were like, oh, my gosh, you're not a total idiot. <laughs> you want to be a manager? And I'm like 20 years old. Not even. I was like in 19 and I was like sure I'll tell people what to do (laughs) um and that like quickly like a lot of the coaches there were like hey you you make more money being a coach like you should be a coach so I became a trainer and I only trained at 24 fitness for not very long and I decided I quickly did some calculations one night and was like I could make way more money training just three clients on my own than all of the clients I have at 24 fitness because they pay you nothing. (laughs) So I, I started my own business and I train out of a facility called Diakati in San Francisco. And it's actually where all of the, um, a lot of the coaches, so like the original set of coaches, 
um, that's where we all train out of. And, and Tonal pretty much like saw us through that website and through all of the things that we had been doing around the city. And that's how Tonal found me. Yeah, I just, Kelly, Coach Kelly reached out to me. He's our head coach. And he reached out to me on like every platform. <laughs> so it was like LinkedIn, which I never check. I actually saw his LinkedIn message like years later. <laughs> so I was like screenshotted it. I was like, cool, um, I'm super down. <laughs> um, and like Instagram, Facebook, email. And I remember reading it and being like, what is this? Like, who? Because mind you, Tonal was not even, it was not a thing yet. It was right. still. You couldn't in, even look it up, right? Because it was kind of. Oh, it no. Was, it was not even that. Like, there was no, there was no actual thing quite yet. <laughs> like, it was still very new. So they're telling me this. And I'm like, this, as someone who's coming from lifting iron, I'm like, Please, really there's a machine i go to the gym and i lift using a barbell like you know very skeptical you're like and okay coach, george jetson okay okay all right what is this 2020 yeah. you know like 2020 like no it's still 2016 or 17 like get out of here um and so coach liz actually was like hey did you get that message from from this company we had a different name at the time and i was like uh yeah she's like you have to email them back i was like are you sure this seems crazy <laughs> this seems really weird he's like she's like no email them back so i did and so thank you coach liz <laughs> um, because now we're here and that's how tonal found us yeah just through coaching diacotti is definitely like the best training facility in san francisco so Kelly knew when he was looking for coaches, like, I'm going to go there. This is where the most qualified, the highly trained. It's really hard to be able to train out of Diakati, even though you're running your own business. You have to be interviewed. You have to go through a long process of being able to actually take your clients there. So, so there's already like leveled up by being at Diakati. And so, yeah, I think it probably basically Diakati made it very easy for Tonal to find their coaches. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, as you were telling the story, it sounds very similar to like, Saturday Night Live and and Second City at the beginning. Oh, yeah. Because like, they were just poaching people from Second City left and right. And, yeah. Because they were like, well, yeah, they already exactly. know how to do what we're doing, so we'll just take all of them. But uh, yeah, so and backing up real quick, um, mm -hmm. so then how did you get into Diakata? Like, that seems like I'm not trying to disparage oh, your path, but that seems like a yeah. big jump from from 24 hour fitness. 24 hour fitness I know. to <laughs> Second City. How did you do that? So it's a funny story. I had at the time, I had long, bright purple hair, like Barney purple. <laughs> a story, story for another time. That was a total accident, technically, my hair color. But I went with it for like three years. I loved it. I had it for like three or five years or something. I walk in and I'm like 23 years old. And I'm like, hi. I lied and I was like, I've been training for, I think I was like, I didn't lie. I think I was like, well, I've only been training for a year and a half, but like, I know what I'm doing. Like, <laughs> they, cause they wanted people training for at least, I think it was like, like three years is like the minimum. And so I, <laughs> I was like, I'm really good at my job. Like I know what I'm doing. I kind of just like BS it. You know, I was like, I have a website. I made it. I was like, you got to have me on your team. And they were like, Oh, okay. Great. So they like kind of brought me through and it was earlier on. So I think getting into the facility now is even harder. But I think because I was young, I was a woman, I was very determined. I was like, I will kill it. And they believed me. Thank goodness. Um, thank you, Billy and Mike. They're the owners of Diakati for believing in me because really like all the coaches are always talking about how Diakati has been like the pillar and the reason for so much of our success. I mean, they've just built an incredible, incredible facility and team and family. So that was like our first family. And then we got poached <laughs> and we all still train there. But a lot of our life now is tonal. Wow. Yeah. So when you so first I just basically I strutted in with my purple hair and that was it. Your yeah. swagger, your swagger is what did it. <laughs> yeah, that goes a long way. It does. People underestimate that. It yeah. does. Yeah. So. Uh, I'm just curious. So when you first started at Tonal, you said they didn't even have a machine. So like, what did you do all day? Like, did you just like light janitorial work? Like, what were you there, doing? No. <laughs> I mean, there was a thing 
It just wasn't <laughs> what it is now. Okay. So, okay. And this I'm sure you guys have probably heard and all Lee like probably talked about it when he came on, I think was where it was like strapped to his, his table essentially. <laughs> yeah. Right. Like yeah. it was like a model, like better than that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> it was not this. And it wasn't the one before this. It was like the one in between the box and like, the next one okay gotcha. <laughs> um, so it was something and we and it wasn't as like hand you know we weren't as involved at the time it was like i was still very full-time with my personal training oh. client so it was like that that is my business and that's my number one priority but we would shoot and we'd come in and we'd practice and things like that but it really like once we came up to launch you know in august what was that 2018 um, is when like we really started to invest more and more of our time. And I actually started to strip down my clientele and, you know, have like dedicated shoot days. And, and that's kind of how that progressed. So wow. no, I was not janitorial staff. <laughs> um, I was just, although the office was so small, <laughs> tiny that it probably would only take one person to clean the space it was like as, as big as my san francisco apartment so. <laughs> so was there a moment in time where they came to you and uh, or just the the other coaches and in, in collectively and said time to ramp down the other stuff and focus on this or did yeah. that just kind of happen organically Never. Did that Never. Just kinda... tonal is like all about us doing like whatever we want to further our careers Right now, Tonal is just this incredible, like, side piece, <laughs> like, side hustle, you know? Um, but it feels more than, like, it, it definitely, and, and I will say, like, even in the last three months with, um, with the current pandemic, like, it's even more so become a bigger part of our life. Because sure. we were shooting the coaches from home content, and that was, like, very all-consuming. So... I think even in the next six months, like we'll start to feel, and I think it with the new company and, you know, we are still new. It's still, yeah. people yeah. still don't know who we are a lot of the time. So most of the time. So I think those things are going to really start to change more rapidly, but still be a progressive change. So we're still all run our own businesses. You see, Paul still runs all his outdoor boot camps, and Liz does a lot of her assessments. Um, and we not Natalie and I and Pablo. We all have our clients. Jared has his inspired fitness. So we all still run our own businesses. I think also because it's really hard to like get a coach to stop coaching. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, the in-person, like going to see my clients is, I, I love my job. So I imagine a day where, okay, if I am at Tonal full time or that it, that exists, I'm like, wow, I, I have to say goodbye to my clients like that. That'll be one of the most heartbreaking, you know, parts of my career for sure. So I think we all we all are appreciative that we still get to be coaches by nature and, you know, in our daily lives. Do you think if I have no idea if down the road Tonal is expecting to do any kind of live classes or to do mm -hmm. like one on one because I mean we all know there's a camera built into the machine it's just not being yeah. used but but like if that in a perfect world were to happen would that kind of like scratch that itch for you or do you still feel like you would still want that like in person one on one time I think I will eventually feel very comfortable transitioning out of one on one. I love my clients, but it's a lot of emotional work. Like, Is it? I am there, you know, I am with them and it's very it's hard, you know, and we talk about this as coaches and and the difference between being like an instructor for cardio and being a coach is that the process of lifting weight is a lot more difficult it's more demanding it requires so much more of you to be present you know it's not about just not stopping mm -hmm. um there's there's pain involved there's discomfort there's uh questions you you're you don't sometimes know if you're doing it right so i think with coaching it's so much more about that connection with someone and and taking them through an environment in which they're not comfortable a lot of the time which is why they've hired you and they've hired you so that they can feel more comfortable and feel like they can step into a gym and be able to work out and train themselves and have the knowledge and the awareness to be able to take themselves through a workout it's not, you know, it's it's much different than just hopping onto a machine or 
some type of treadmill or bike, there's a lot more to it. And so being a coach, there's an emotional tie between you and clients. And some clients are different than others, or sometimes you're closer than others. But as a coach, you're taking people through very frustrating and challenging moments. And it takes a very a deep, a deep connection with someone to, to be able to train them and coach them properly. The one good thing so. about not having live classes is that you don't hear us get frustrated at you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the whole live thing is interesting, you know, right. like I and you've probably seen this on the on the um community like the coaches love that linear style that we do with like the coaches from home like we want to definitely continue to do that I still don't know about live like and for people who work out on tonal a lot I think we either kind of like how would that work yeah I'm not sure you know that because of timing and 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 how how much your tempo if you've taken any workout with me I don't (laughs) shut up about tempo how important that is and how much quicker you move if you're in a class environment or you're in a live experience, right? In order to get as many as you can. And that might not be conducive to the goal at my, in mind for whatever that workout is. Yes. So Yes. And I, think, I, I, I never that realized that until, until I started using tonal because I was never into weights. I, I just never got comfortable with them because it, it wasn't comfortable at the gym. And so I never yeah. did it on my own. I didn't know what I was doing. And um, it has completely changed my point of view and how how I work out. And I find myself explaining that to people all the time on social media because people ask about that all the time. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Mm -hmm. You don't understand. It's actually a benefit and a plus that it's not, in my opinion, that it's not live because I, I would not want to be rushing to keep up with somebody else that's that's not necessarily the but like you said the best thing for me to be doing and and like you said it really is like there's a bigger a more difficult barrier to entry to weightlifting it is just a whole other beast that i don't that people i think they know because that's why less people do it it's much it's more and that's why it's more difficult it's it's more uncomfortable. It, it really pushes people in ways I don't think that they expect. Like even when I go to do, you know, a front squat and I'm like, shoot, my knee, like what's going on with that? Like those are micro frustrations that you then, you know, take in physically. And then you're like, oh, I have to front squat today. And I remember I had that, that issue with my hip. You don't get that as much when you're static on something like and even like a machine at the gym where it's just you're seated and that's all you're doing you know yeah um, or a cardio piece of equipment so it's just weightlifting is just a lot different it's you know it's it's a whole different ball game very interesting and and speaking of how you guys have all of your own businesses tell us about your business because you do personal training but you also do like the is it pronounced postural training like you also do yeah so I'm a posture specialist, essentially. You know, when I went to Diakati and I first came in there, you know, with my long purple hair, I, my, what I've always done with my career, and even before that, which wasn't really much of a career, but I, was a, I became a pretty high-level manager at 24 Hour Fitness very young. And all I ever did was find a mentor. I mean, that was always a big part. Like, what is the person, who, who is someone I'm working alongside that I admire? I like what they're doing and I want to do that. They're obviously seeing success. I'm going to rack their brain. I'm going to, I'm going to get to know them and I want to know what they're doing and I want to learn from them. So as soon as I got to Diakati, um, there was a man named Tom and he's this big teddy bear. He's like my, one of my best friends now. Just big, big guy. The opposite of me. <laughs> Massive guy. And uh, he, I was like, this guy is busy. He's making really good money. He's charging a lot for his sessions. He looks like he loves what he's doing every single day that he walks into the gym. I want to do what that guy's doing. Whatever he's doing, I want to do it. And he became my mentor and he quickly introduced me to a lot of like high level certifications. And so I got certified through an institute called the Czech Institute started by a man named Paul Czech. And I got two uh, certifications through that or actually three certifications through that program. And that is a very holistic style of training. So it's everything from your mental and emotional state and how that influences movement, but it also concentrates heavily on the spine and how essentially the way you sit and stand and the way your posture is, is how you begin and end movement. So it influences the way that your body moves. 
if your spine is flexed forward and you try and move this way, it's going to definitely affect the shoulder, the elbow, the wrist, and everything that's basically radiating, radiating off of your spine. So that's kind of how I train. I train with the idea that if we can improve the position of your spine, it's then going to influence all of the joints attached to the spine and the way that they operate and how they move and how mobile they are and how the muscles operate and, and activate based on the, that positioning of your body. So I got all the certifications and really leaned in that for the long time. But it's, it's this thing you might, if you've ever talked to any other coaches, when you start getting a lot of certifications, you start to attract those types of people. It's crazy. The universe is crazy. <laughs> and so I started to attract people essentially that were really messed up, like physically, you know, and I was loving it for a time. And I was like, but it really is like, it, it's a lot. It's like whew, brain exploding all the time. And I was like, okay, do I want to continue to go in this direction? Which I could, it would be, it's very therapeutic. It's like, you know, physical therapy type training. And I was like, well, I actually want to venture more into program design. And that's kind of what I bring to Tonal a lot as well is my program design knowledge. And so then I started getting more certifications on program design specifically and getting more knowledgeable on different types of program design, really in depth and intricate program design protocols and variables and things like that. So that's where my training is. It's this mixture of basically start clients with this postural analysis and really getting to know their body more corrective and getting their body into its best position possible. And then we move into like the heavy lifting and the heavy duty power and strength and hypertrophy and all of those things once our base has been established, essentially. Interesting. So does having better posture or correct posture, does that help you lift more? Definitely. Yeah. Because you have to think too, like, you know, I always use like the shoulder as an example or the spine with the shoulder, because even just simple movements, if you guys were to like just super slouch forward and then try and lift and open your arm, it's a lot more difficult than when you're here. And now I can easily lift and open my arms. So that's just a really simple example of how that can affect it. And if, you're here and you're rowing, it's gonna be a lot different than when you're here and you're rowing. And you also hear Coach Jackson talk about this a ton, which is like form and tempo and execution are a huge reason as to why he um, really emphasizes that in his program design for hypertrophy is because if you're not thinking about the muscles, if you're not in the correct position, the muscles won't fire as easily, which means you won't get all of that energy toward that muscle getting bigger. So it definitely influences that plus, you won't have as much chance of injury and that always helps you get stronger <laughs> yes yes definitely <laughs> or at least it prevents gaps in your journey to being stronger <laughs> right right for and, sure and like having to take pauses or you know pause your training because of injury so yeah it's and definitely sh- an important piece to it as a short guy need all the help i can get posture that's true helps in that regard <laughs> <laughs> are we all a short crew here five six <laughs> i am also five six so I I'm win. Five five. I'll say five six though. Just because we can all be the same. Yeah. I'm like five I'm like five seven in heels. Yeah. In heels. You know what? Yeah. You probably look really good in heels. Well, I don't like to brag. <laughs> he doesn't like when I wear heels, I'll tell yeah. you that. Well, I can imagine that that, that was, ends up being an issue. My only, that was my only request when we got married. And she's like, but dress and bridesmaids, and all of that. So I'm like, don't care. Just no heels. She's like, shoot, I have to wear comfortable shoes all yeah. the time. <laughs> Darn it. <laughs> I mean, nobody can see him anyway. Exactly. You know? So sad. I'd be like, oh, you're horrible. I can't wear my Nikes every day. <laughs> oh, too funny. Okay, so I have a question about um, one of my favorite programs of yours, which is the Better Bike and Tread. So do you, mm-hmm. did did you, were you inspired to do that because you have like a Peloton or was that like just, you just happened to do that or how did that come to be? So our requests usually come from Kelly and from what I mean, you guys know this, like Tonal really listens to its community. Yes. So when a community member or many want or express a need for something, we really listen. So there's a big process as to deciding like what programs are going to be coming up next. 
we have a lot of say in that. Like I will reach out to my producers and the product and be like, Hey, like recently I put out my quick core burner and I was like, Hey guys, I posted this core workout on the tunnel Facebook community. Everyone loved it. Can I do it as a workout? Great. Done. So it happens like that. But then there's also bigger requests, like bigger overarching, like, Hey, we need like this kind of program, you know, blah, blah, blah. So I got a, I had a conversation with coach Kelly, our head coach, and it was on along the lines of like, well, we want something to go along with Peloton. We can't ignore that so many of our users are also Peloton members. And both of these members are essentially really starting to mold together as one in a lot of ways. And I, I was like, yes, yes, yes. Cause I had just, I just started, but I was like, slowly starting to get more acquainted with Peloton and like following the instructors. And I had just gotten a bike and I was all about it. So I created the better bike and tread one, the first one. And I was so excited. It was actually, it's been a while now. That's an older program, which is kind of crazy because <laughs> it doesn't feel like it, but it's like almost a year and a half, probably old at wow. this point. Wow. Um, which is wild. Yeah. So I was inspired because I had seen a lot of people say like, I want to improve this. I want to improve that. So I was always helping people with like one-off workouts or like exercises specifically. And so to be able to create a program that also includes a stretching day, that's perfect. I think, is that that for, oh no, that's my take a hike program. I think I'm I getting it mixed up. I think you, you do or have a recovery day. One. You have a recovery day in there. Uh, it's like, it's like, okay. it's like stretching. Like it's all stuff that yeah. like you do the stretching. I think, and stuff. I, I think that's, yeah, I think I do in my hike one, my hike, take a hike one as well. But I was really excited to create a program that I was so confident would help people PR essentially. It so did. not only on tonal, <laughs> but on Peloton and not get them too sore. I think that's what the problem was, was a lot of our programs up to then were getting people too sore to then be able to perform better on their Peloton. So I wanted to create something that was a little bit more balanced that wouldn't cause as much soreness and was quick enough that you could still tack on the Peloton at the end. And it's been, I mean, it's definitely been a huge hit. So yeah, definitely. <laughs> and and it, um, I can absolutely verify that it works because I had, I had yeah. PRs across the board after I did that. And I haven't done the better bike and tread too, but I, I fully intend to, and I will probably have the same yeah. success. So I'm it definitely has gotten just as much good feedback for those that have done it. It's shorter. It's different. So the Peloton too. Kelly reached out to me that time and was like, Hey, let's do a second one. I'm thinking about this kind of method. What are your thoughts? And I was like, great. Love that. Let's, you know, we'll kind of like work through it and we establish it, worked on some things and came out with the idea of like, okay, let's work on like actual power on tonal and then power on Peloton bike, whatever, or your whatever bike and tread doesn't have to be Peloton. Sure. And so that's something that we don't have on tonal either. So not a lot of programs are like that one on tonal where you're working on just one big movement and working on power for that movement that stimulates those same muscles that are essentially giving you power there are then going to get stimulated and like turned on and ready to go so that you can hop onto Peloton. So it's just different. And it's also, and I've talked about a lot of programming on tonal, especially in the Facebook community. And that's definitely my specialty. And it's important that we, you know, undulate the intensities. So it's important that when we do two phase programs or three phase, like my making muscle, that we pay attention to the intensities. And so when I made the second one, I wanted to make sure that it was different enough, like very different, that it could be a completely different phase and could be done back to back. You know, you wouldn't want it to be like similar. Right, right. Because then you're just because because my understanding is you guys kind of keep those programs short so that your body doesn't get too used to the same exercise over and over again. Yeah. And and that was actually one of my questions. Right. That's why that's why even though certain moves work, you don't want to just always do that move to get stronger because then it kind of like your body just gets used to it. It doesn't it doesn't it's not as effective anymore. Right. It's not, you know, it's really good to repeat. you like, you'll always, and you probably guys have noticed this, like standing overhead press, front squat or goblet squat, bench press, right? Those are like your primal, your big moves that are in like every program. Like those are the moves that all the other exercises complement those moves. We're trying to get those exercises stronger. So then your 
second block and your third block are all usually exercises to help get that first big move, you know, even stronger than when you start the program. Okay. And so that repeated exposure is important, but we also have to make sure that like, you know, for the, for the people that go into the gym and have been doing the same workout for 15 years, you're not going to get much out of that. Your body's gotten used to it. It needs to constantly be challenged. And even when we go and talk about like motivational stuff, like mentally, like you need to be, your brain needs to be stimulated by change and challenge. So do your muscles. So does your body. Like it, it needs to be challenged in order to really see change. And I think that's where a lot of people get confused like oh why does a program repeat like over and over again like why do we do the same exercises but it's actually very specific like you should repeat the same workout about four times it's like the sweet spot that's the the point in which your body starts to get used to it. it's like that fourth week you're like oh this feels good now sorry eh, you're done. <laughs> moving on <laughs> you know like right when you're like oh i, I think i like this is like kind of good now it's like oh nope it's time to change but you know there's a fine line like you want your body to remember and get better and learn but you don't want it to get too comfortable like lifting should never be comfortable <laughs> it shouldn't be painful but it should never be comfortable if it's comfortable you're probably not doing it right. <laughs> that's a good, that's a good rule of thumb. Yeah. 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 Well, mission accomplished. Yeah. And, you know, <laughs> yeah. Right. And it's like, it's, it's a lot different than like, Oh, this hurts. Right. But it's, it's more like, okay, that was really hard. Do I want to do that day in and day out? No, <laughs> not really. Do I know it's good for me? Yes. Like that's kind of the intensity that you're always wanting your workouts to be is like, okay, that was really hard. I'm, I'm glad that it's over <laughs> so <laughs> for when, today at least. So when, when you work out for yourself, not for like coaching somebody or whatever, when you're doing mm -hmm. your own personal exercise, do you feel like that you're in that place working out that you you're uncomfortable or struggling slightly or do you know, do you live always. in that realm? Y'all make it look real easy. You know, I, okay, funny you say that. I, this is what I always tell my new clients. They're saying, they're like, you make it look so easy. I was like, if I made this look hard, we'd be screwed. <laughs> like, if I can't do it, like, then how am I going to make you do it? Like, we'd be, we'd, we'd be dead in the water. You know, like, where would we go from here? So, <laughs> uh, I also would say that, like, I, I've always really been very aware of my body. So form and technique and coaching have always been like my forte for sure. Like even helping other coaches, not tonal coaches, but other coaches with form and technique. That's something that I've taught and mentored a lot. I think it's something that I'm probably maybe better at than some. I just very natural for me, like just connected, you know, and I, that's another thing that I think is makes it hard for people to lift weight and get introduced to lifting weight and, and that because, you have to be very connected to your body. You can't just, again, you can't just go sit or walk. It's, it's this very like integrated, challenging new thing that you're moving in every direction that a lot of people don't get comfortable in, you know? So, so I forget if I even answered the question that you asked. You, you did. <laughs> you dead. did. I, okay. I have a question. I am currently doing your uh, power to the max. And oh, so I, I did day three yesterday and um, I it would was, argue that that's the hardest program I have. People think it's raising the barbell, but okay, well know. that makes Power me feel better because insane. that is painful. Like I like, I, I mean, I was legit sore. I was still sore from the first day of the legs. Whenever we had to do the second day yesterday for legs, and I was like, Th "This you is can hard." Always take an extra rest day. You know me. Listen to your body. Yes, but. yes, and I and and like since it was different moves, I was able to do it. Um. Good. But you know what I find weird is that, and I don't know if this is normal, my upper body doesn't get as sore as my lower body. And I don't know if that means, like, is that a sign that I'm not doing the form correctly on the upper body? Or is that because, like, my upper body is just weaker and I don't lift as much? What does that mean? Do you feel like it's challenging? Like, are you struggling? Yeah, especially, like, like bicep curls. I suck at those. I really, like, really, and I don't feel like I should, but it's like... You know how you guys always say keep your arms like straight whenever I try to mm -hmm. keep my arms straight and only move just my forearms like it's I always feel like my right arm like has to adjust at the bottom every single time. 
It's just like things do like you, that. When you're working out, do you feel your biceps working? Yes, but not not even close to like what I feel like my legs are doing. You know, I, I I feel like a lot of the times it really is like execution. Even injury a lot of the time is just execution of the exercise, like an issue with execution. I would say a big thing about the upper body is if you're not actually like squeezing the muscle and thinking about the muscle that you want to work, it, it might not. Okay. It, so I, and especially because you're handling less weight because your, your lower body is more, is uh, stronger. Right. Right. So you're handling less weight in general, usually with the upper body. I would a think more about the muscle that you're working. So literally manually contract it, even if you have to look at it like that can actually help, like send your brain to that muscle every single time. Like I want you to just squeeze that muscle in order to bring up your hand. Like imagine like, okay, my elbow can't bend unless I shorten and engage that muscle coming up. Like you're trying to like right now, you're trying to get yourself sore body weight. Like imagine that, like I could get myself sore just by squeezing and really engaging every single time I lift my hand up. So that's one part of it. Making sure you have enough weight, obviously, but also form. So it's kind of got into this a little bit earlier and Jackson and Coach Jackson has talked about this is how much your form dictates your engagement and how much energy goes to that muscle fiber. If you're not actually doing the exercise right, the correct muscle might not be working and, or it might not at least be the prime mover like it should be. And if it's not, then it's, it's not going to get sore. So I would reevaluate form, go over for any exercises you feel like you're doing that you're not getting sore, find the form and fives in the tonal Facebook community really dive into those, make sure that you're getting all into the nitty gritty of the form. Um, that would be really helpful and see if that, and see if that improves anything. And then mind you though, I do find sometimes with my upper body that if my weight is too heavy, I don't get good form and then I don't get a sore. If I lighten the load a little bit and I can really concentrate on form and getting like a, let's say a row, a full range versus like if it's too heavy, I get to like here yes. instead of here. Big difference. So it might be an issue of like, okay, maybe I actually decrease the weight a little bit so that I can engage even better and get like a full range of motion, concentrate on my eccentric movement, things like that. So okay. It could be that it's, if it's too easy, take it up. If you feel like you're not getting the correct form, maybe take it down and then just engage more. Okay. okay. That's good advice because I it bet is. a lot of people feel like, oh, if you make the weight lighter. Not my strength score is going to go down. You're cheating. You know? <laughs> I know. I, you know what? I'm not a numbers girl. Like yeah. I literally don't give a poop about. I'm trying trying not to cuss here. <laughs> <laughs> um, about like numbers and the strength score. Although I am stoked on like my weekly streak, like that's a number I like to track. Um, but I get it like, or you could do, um, and I, so I did this because we had to do our coaches from home workouts and they get, it gets really funky when we're doing those. So I created like a separate account for my coaches from home and you can always practice your movements oh. on another account too and oh. play around with like weight that feels better and then take that back into your other account as well. That's smart. That's a good tip as well. Yeah. You should do this yeah. for a living. So, <laughs> I know. Isn't it crazy? Yeah. I feel like I get paid I could get paid really good money for this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you would need it living in San Francisco. <laughs> True. Oh my gosh, you're telling me. We're yeah. currently house hunting to rent and whew, Although rent is dropping because of what everything that's going on. Oh. So lock anyway. in now. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, mm-hmm. that's true. Get in there. So how much work goes into creating classes and programs, especially like like how do you keep it fresh? I would I feel like as someone who knows nothing about this sort of stuff, like uh, that there would just be a finite number of things that you could tell people to do. So how do you keep rearranging those to not be so, repetitive? Programming wise, endless. But maybe that's because I like specialize in program design. Like that's my bread and butter. (laughs) Like I love that, you know? So I feel like there's always a way to change things up, even if you're limited on movements. Programs take a long time to make. 
Like they? they're they're not just like making a playlist and then like throwing in things. Like it's it is you know like other formats of another company. It's like it it is a lot. So we get a request. We go over this big template. We have our big list of exercises that exist on Tonal. And the first thing I do is concentrate. Okay, what's my goal? We'll get like what the goal is of the program or the workout. I then start to refine like what's my time limit? Um, what's the intensity? Like what's the beginner, intermediate, intermediate or advanced? And from there, I start to pick movements and I pull movements. And the biggest thing we have to concentrate on, which is one of the hardest parts about creating our programs on Tonal, are the arm adjustments. Making sure that the arm adjustments aren't too crazy in between exercises. So that's really hard because there are way there are times where I would have made a completely different workout, but because I don't want to have someone have to go from like a barbell bench press to you know arms going up and doing a pull down with the handles, like that would just take a really long time in between and be very cumbersome. So that's a big thing that we look at is okay what is going to be the experience for our members when they do this workout or this program? Like, is it going to be fluid? And like, I'm currently making a new program right now and there's quite a bit of adjustments, but it's an advanced program. I'm gonna tell them ahead of time. I, there's a lot of adjustments, but you'll get a better workout because we did this, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so we basically like, we get it all together, then pick like the reps and the intensity and how many sets and if there's going to be an advanced weight mode feature. And uh, then we go through the process of explaining to our production team, why did we choose all these exercises so that they can talk about it appropriately and name it and all those things. And we give name suggestions and we tell um, our team like, Hey, this is why I wrote it. This is what's really important. This is what I want my, my members and my uh, clients to pull from it when they do the workout and then it gets sent for approval. Uh, and then it comes back with the templates to write all of our, like our, our VO, you know? So it's definitely a process. Like it takes us time to really to think about what we're going to offer and something that's going to live on there forever. It means a lot to us to make sure that it is 110% the best thing that we can put out there because it's it's it doesn't get our programs don't get pushed down very quickly, you know. So yeah. it's important to put out something that we're really proud of and that we know people want and need and make sure like it's, you know, top quality. Do you do you have like a an overall like is it like a month? Is it two weeks? Is it six months? Kind of like how long it takes? I mean, to make a program. Oh, and then I forgot the part where we have to test the program out. <laughs> so I, I'll, I'll write it before I get it submitted. I'll do it and maybe be like, oh, you know what? That move like wasn't that, that didn't feel it wasn't as challenging as I thought it was. Or, oh, I didn't like that switching back and forth. I'm going to make an adjustment. So I do it a couple times to each one. So just the process of like making it and doing it on tonal, going back and forth just with myself usually takes at least a week. Wow. wow. Yeah. So how many yeah. programs do you think you create like in a month? Uh, tonal or just me? Uh, I guess for tonal. Tonal it's I mean, it really depends. We each coach is making something every month, pretty much like wow. we're, we're always like writing a program, whether we're filming it that like in that time or later or whatever it is like we're always creating something like each coach. Sure. Right now it's like some are doing coaches from home. Um, some of us are in the studio, so we're all at, at some point contributing in some way to writing programs. And then how many do you every think? Month. And then how many do you think you make? Um, overall, yeah, just on roughly. tonal. Yeah, I mean, there's I think I think I have like twelve or fifteen programs. Yeah, I have the most out of any coach on tonal. <laughs> Uh, the most programs, yeah. Like, I think it's that. because <laughs> yeah. um, I think it's literally just because I was like the most available at a time, like to shoot more often <laughs> is really the only reason, and because like you know. I don't know. I'm the best. Just kidding. Um, <laughs> not at all. It literally is because I was like, hi, I'm going to make myself very available to shoot. Let me come into the studio. Like, so that's really all it is. It's because you um, started at 24 hour fitness and you had to work 24 hours. That's literally. Those are long shifts. I'm all, go, 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 yeah. go. <laughs> 
You know, I was thinking if you have a program with too many adjustments, a little little tip. Oh, just buy another tonal. Just buy. Yeah. <laughs> just put two. I mean, there. really? That yeah. should I just say that in my next program? Right. Yeah. Just buy Be a like, second oh, tonal. Oh, you guys are gonna start this program. <laughs> just so you know, you have to have two tonals. Right. <laughs> So the barbell up on one. Shout, shout out to Julius Jones. <laughs> <laughs> Just go to Julius's gym to do your workout. Yeah, right. <laughs> Two classes simultaneously. That's awesome. <laughs> Love it. Uh, so, you know, I remember in one of your classes, you talked about uh, how you have like a bunch of little siblings. Are, are they all active? Like, is your whole family active? You said your dad is. My dad's super active. My dad and I are a lot alike. We just, that's, I don't, I don't think it's like, I have a, I have my other sister, Remy. So my family's kind of funny. Should I just tell you that? It's funny. Okay. So my mom and had, my mom and my dad had me when they were super duper young, like 20 years old. And they never were married or anything. They had me. So they're still really good friends. My mom and dad, they're like great friends. Had me that at three years old, you know, they split up. My mom and my uh, dad each got remarried and they got pregnant and had a baby's 12 days apart. So I had, I went from being an only child when I was nine to having two sisters within 12 <laughs> days, but they're not related to each other, but I'm related to both of them. Oh gosh. And then, yeah, but they grew up like super close cause they're the same age and my parents were good friends. So, um, <laughs> so it's funny. So then, so then my mom, um, also has, um, uh, my little brother, Jacob, and Jacob is 14 years younger than me. Oh, wow. so my sisters are 23. They're nine years younger than me. And then my brother is 14 years younger than me. So I definitely grew up more of like a parental role in a lot of ways. Um, I feel like just now, like in the last couple of years, my sisters and my brother are finally like, Oh, like you're cool. I guess <laughs> <laughs> like you guys, I am so cool. Don't treat me like your mom. Like, treat me like the cool older sister that I am. Please. You know, like, I'm begging you. Kids, Um, they just never appreciate those things. They never do. They do not. (laughs) And I I always thought it was like, if I had an older sister that was in her, like, late 20s while I was a teenager, that would have been, like, the best resource ever. (laughs) You know? And I just, they never told me any of their secrets. I had to pry it out of them. Now they're telling me their secrets more. (laughs) Finally. They didn't do that much in high school. <laughs> Kids, man. I, yeah. I, know. <laughs> I, I just made me think of when Brian was playing rock band all the time. My my son, he was probably 11 at the time, and he would always play, and you could pick different guitar heroes as your avatar. Yes. He would always play yes. Zach Wild, who played in, uh, has a band called Black Label Society. He was played for Ozzy Osbourne for a long time. Yeah. And, uh, and I showed him one day, I'm like, oh, Zach, Zach Wild. And I'm like, here's a picture of me and Zach Wild. And he's just like, eh. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, it's just me hanging out he's with like, the guitar player from Ozzy Osbourne. And he's like, yeah, that's okay, I guess. I'm like, oh, okay, okay, I guess that's kind of cool. All right, yeah, cool, whatever. Dad. Whatever. I mean, that was probably cool, like, when that happened. Right. Like, at the time. How long ago was that? Yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. It's so funny now, because we'll be talking about something, and he'll be like, who's that? Both of the kids, because, like, he has a fi- his 15-year-old and my 13-year-old, and they have no idea who we're talking about musically. Yeah. It's just, like, this is so depressing. <laughs> you guys have two kids, then. Three, I have two boys, and she has three. a girl. Yeah. 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 So okay. his his okay. oldest doesn't live with us. So just the two youngest yeah. live with us. So <laughs> okay, those uh, are quite the age. Thirteen, yeah. you said. Yeah, thirteen and fifteen. Yeah, it's it's. Uh, uh, oh yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, it's fun. Definitely like okay, they're teenagers. So. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> and hello, how. yes, and how. yeah. I'm pretty sure my daughter yep. really hit teenage years when she was ten. So that's usually how it happens with girls. Yeah. Well, she was right on time then. (laughs) (laughs) I feel like my sister, especially Haley, was like a teenager when she was like five. Like she grew up like listening to like Britney Spears and like dancing in her bedroom and like, oh my god! When where where did where did ten, eleven, twelve go? Here she's like five years old. Like she's like me. She was like always performing and like karaoke and constantly like here and like ready to go if anyone's ready to walk her you know but i feel like girls are just like that though they get they grow up a little bit quicker they do 
They do. When they're younger, you know? Yeah. So uh, <laughs> what is your favorite part about working at Tonal? I mean, being in the studio, for sure. Like, I love, our production team is like family. We have so much fun. I mean, you guys have probably seen some of the outtakes of our shoots and stuff. We're just like constantly goofing off and it's definitely, I, I'm always like, it's a conducive environment to learning how to be on camera. <laughs> I went to school for TV and radio broadcasting on camera journalism. So I, I was, you know, I was had practiced for four years, like talking in front of a camera and like doing all the production end of things. But this is a whole different ball game. And I'm Tomo sure. really believed in us. Like when they found us, it's not like we were on camera personalities already. We were just coaches like we were all just coaches you know Liz has done some acting I went to school for being on on camera but other than that like we you know Pablo does a lot of his like theater work and Natalie is a dancer like we all have our you know and Paul was was a professional football player so it's like we all have these moments where we've been in front of people but they really believed in us and have invested in us learning how to be better on camera and more comfortable. And now that it is officially just so much more comfortable and it's, we have a routine. It's, we just, it's so much fun. I love it. Like if I, if I could be on at, at the studio every day, that's what I would want my week to look like for sure. Like that's, that's awesome. That's what I hope for. You it's, know, it's, good, <laughs> it's good to have a job that you love. That's, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And I love coaching too, but there's just, you know, I, I mean, I went to school for TV and radio broadcasting on camera journalism for a reason. Like I, I wanted to, to be on camera. I enjoy performing. I was a singer and a dancer. Like I, I love that. So I think that it, it fulfills both of those needs. It's kind of crazy. Like I became a trainer and then now I'm using my degree that I never thought that I would use. <laughs> right. it's like as soon as I started coaching, I was like, I'm not doing that again. Yeah. You know, and here we are. I'm like, it's a perfect mix of two. So who uses a mass crazy. communications degree? <laughs> Nobody. So, he so has funny. one. I have he has one. one. That's I, why he's saying that. <laughs> oh, really? See, when I found out, I was like, they're gonna, you're just going to have to move to like Timbuktu and serve someone coffee for 10 years. And then maybe you'll make money after that. I was like, no. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. What about to, like, the tonal? Maybe get on camera. <laughs> what about the tonal itself? What's your favorite part about it? Oh my gosh. Okay. My favorite feature on tonal is definitely the way on and off. I think that's just magical. I agree. <laughs> um, I think that is like the most clutch part about tonal is just being able to turn the weight on and turn the weight off. I love the, I love eccentric mode, obviously, because that's something that's impossible to do in the gym, pretty much. Like you can't be at the top of a bench press and then like you'd have to have two friends pull the weight off at the exact same time so the bar doesn't fall over. Like it's impossible to do. So I would say eccentric mode and being able to turn the weight on and off are like two of my favorite things. And having coaching. You think that like I program all day. The last thing I want to do is program for myself. So... <laughs> Now that I don't have to program for myself, it is incredible. <laughs> like I, I never would follow my own programs in the gym. I'd always have an excuse of being like, oh, I'm going to do a new program this week. I'm like, I would just get, I just couldn't stick to it because I was like constantly getting inspired by my client's programs. I'd be like, oh, I want to do that program, you know? And now I like have a program, but I just, <laughs> I'm always, I'm always on a program pretty much. And all the coaches are different, but I'm pretty much always doing one of the coaches programs, like pretty much all the time. Cause I also want to know like, what are our members feeling and how is this experience and how can I make it better? And how can I improve my own performance and whatnot and learn from my fellow coaches too, you know? Do you ever take your own classes and is it weird? Yes. <laughs> no, not anymore. It used to be weird. It used to be weird because it was awful. Like, have you done our really old workouts? <laughs> They're not very good. <laughs> you've come a long way is what you're saying <laughs> uh, thanks tonal for believing in us um we're also working with a an environment that's very like there's no music it's you know oh, we yeah. are trying to actually coach like that's what coaching is coaching we don't work out with our clients when we coach them so it truly is like a coaching environment you know and but we're learning like we're always learning on how to make it better and I definitely do my own workouts and my own programs. I'll do them all the way through. I want to be able to speak to it and really answer questions when people ask. So I definitely do that. 
Um, and I, I, enjoy, I write my programs and I like them. So I do them because mm. I, I do think that they're great workouts and they're workouts that I like to do, which is naturally how I program. So, and it used to be weird because it was, it would we'd be like, Oh, Oh, <laughs> why did I, the way I said that? Oh God, what am I wearing? Oh my, what's my hair doing? Oh my, what is that bow that I thought would be cool? Like so many things. No, like, I feel like it's hair. So much better. Yeah. <laughs> So. Well, I, I know that we I know that everybody does that because when we started when we started podcasting. Tom was like, oh, you need to prepare yourself that when you hear your own voice, it's going to be, be weird. It's going to be weird. Yeah, and it weird. is. It is very weird. But now you're used to it's now. Weird. Now I am. It's yeah. weird. To, it would yeah. be weird to not have the headphones on. But the first yeah. time you put the headphones on and you hear what you really sound like, not what it sounds like echoing around your own noggin. Like, you're what? like, what? <laughs> yeah. What is this? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Is that me? <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy day to, uh, to join us. Bef- before we go, uh, so let, awesome. pe- let people know where they can find you on the social media and the interwebs and all that stuff. Yes. So um, my uh, handle on Instagram is probably like the best way to reach me, which is coach.nicolette, N-I-C-O-L-E-T-T-E. And I'm, I usually communicate with a lot of tonal members and, you know, clients through there and then, you know, in the Facebook community, but that community is so big now. It's crazy. It's a lot harder to keep up with the communication on the Facebook community. I try and get in there as much as possible, but it's like, it's really, really difficult. And then my website is uh, nicoletteawellness.com. And I have a lot of like virtual um, options as far as training, even when we're not in a pandemic, actually. (laughs) But I do a lot of um, postural assessments and movement assessments if I'm not bringing on new clients, because I don't usually bring on many clients. A lot of my clients I've had for like seven years plus years. Like I think right now my like newest client is like two years. Wow. That says a lot. It does. um, Actually, no, I have one that I have one client that started with me during the pandemic, actually. Oh, um, but other than that, yeah, I've had everyone for a really long time. So I don't oftentimes bring on new clients. So um, being able to just do one off assessments and things like that, things like that are actually a big part of my business. Um, people reach out to me a lot to do movement and posture assessments. And then from there, they get like a program that will help improve their posture and tips on how to move better. So those are, those have been a great resource for a lot of people if they can't actually train with me. And as tonal starts to get more busy, I think I'll, we'll naturally be training a little bit less and less. So it'll be even harder to, to, to be a, an actual client, but yeah. So nicoletteawellness.com and coach.nicolette. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for talking to us today. Yes. Thank you. Thank this you been a blast. guys so much. <laughs> I'm so excited. I don't think I said anything too embarrassing either, which is <laughs> no. remarkable. Is there anything embarrassing you would like to say before we go? Yeah, I'm like, you know what? How can I make this more awkward? Like, <laughs> how do we? This just was too easy. <laughs> we'll try harder to make it awkward yes. next time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Most definitely. Most like, definitely. Where were you on the night of July 14th, 2012? <laughs> Let's get a spotlight on yeah. you. You guys don't want to know what I was doing prior, like 2000, like when I was in my early 20s. Woo! Who knows what I was doing? <laughs> so join us next week for part two of our interview with Coach Nicolette. Where we talk about Nicolette before she became yeah. a trainer. <laughs> I have to charge for that one. <laughs> that goes behind the paywall. Yes, we're creating a paywall. <laughs> uh, well, thank you so yes, much for you. doing this. We really Thanks appreciate guys it. Thank you so much. <laughs> well, have a good rest of your evening. And uh, this will probably be up in, I would say, in within a week or so. So it'll be up soon. Cool. Can't wait to hear my voice. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. 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 Okay, well, I guess that brings this one to a close. It does. And uh, so until next time, where can people find you? People can find me at facebook.com slash crystal D. O'Keefe. They can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Clip Out Crystal. And you can find me on Twitter at Roger Kubert or on Facebook at facebook.com slash Tom O'Keefe. Don't forget, you can find the show online, facebook.com slash superset podcast. You can also watch full video of this episode and 
last time's episode, the previous episode, at our YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash the clip out, which is the name of our other podcast. And uh, it will live on there. So go check that out. That's fun. If Absolutely. You, if you want to see how we interact with see people. If you guys can get us above two views. I oh, bet you can. I, I got faith in them. I do too. I've got faith in them. <laughs> so, uh, so anyway, uh, that's it for this time. Thanks for tuning in. And until next time, keep lifting. The Superset is made possible in part by support from Tonal.